Knowing how to use a tool like Adobe XD or Figma is not going to make you a great designer. You have to have other traits of great designers, but what are those other traits? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and before we jump into today's video, make sure to check out my membership, link is going to be down in the description below. Membership contains all of my courses, design products, private access to the Facebook group, project files for these YouTube videos and much more, so if you're interested, make sure to check it out, once again, link is going to be down in the description below. Now, what are some traits of great designers? Well, it's quite simple. You cannot just know how to use a tool like XD or Sketch and call yourself a designer. You have to have some other traits. And the first one of these traits is spotting and solving problems. You have to understand what are the problems that your clients might face and you have to understand how can you solve those problems and you do that by doing your research. You have to research who your client is, what is their niche, what are their issues, what is their competition and to understand what the clients of your clients actually want. So when you know all of those things you will be able to solve the problems that your client might face and therefore you're going to be much more useful as a designer than just by using Sketch or XD. You have to have empathy with your client, you have to understand their wishes, you have to understand their needs and wants, what are the needs of their business and what are their personal needs as a business owner. So you have to understand those things in order to bring better design decisions into your design. How to do that? Quite simply, do your research. As I mentioned in the previous method, you have to do your research, you have to understand who your client is, who their target audience is and therefore you are going to be able to bring those better design decisions to the table and to understand them better. Also, you have to research the competition. You have to understand what is the competition of your client doing, how are they doing it and more importantly, why are they doing it? If you see pattern repeating throughout your customer's competition, that means that probably something is working quite well for that competition and therefore you should be able to replicate those solutions into your client's solutions. But make sure not to steal. This is not the uh, point of this exercise. It's just to understand what patterns are working for your client. For example, one major key and one major pattern is in the navigation. If your client's competition is using certain patterns, for example, logo on the left, text on the right, or breadcrumbs menu or rich menus or something like that, just make sure to understand why are they using it and is it going to benefit your client in a long way if you implement that sort of solution into their design design as well. And the best way to do this is to focus on a niche. If your client is in a certain niche, make sure to focus on that niche and to work in projects in that particular niche for a long period of time. That way you're going to understand much better what are their problems, what are the solutions to the problems they might be having and how can you as a designer help solve those problems. By familiarizing yourself with a niche and with the needs and wants of your client in that particular niche, you're going to be able to understand understand that niche much better and to bring those design decisions much better. So for example, if you're in a car selling niche, is it a used car sales or new car sales? Because used car sales, uh, people who are buying those used cars are going to want much different uh, things than people who are buying a new car. For example, new car has zero miles or kilometers on it. So therefore, they don't have to go through hoops to understand who was the previous owner, how was the car treated, how was the servicing done and stuff like that. They just need to focus on the warranty, for example, and what does that car bring for them in the long term. While on the other hand, for you, car uh, sales, it's going to be much different because you have to understand how was that car serviced, where was it driven, was it a highway, was it a local road, was it just a city driving, when was it serviced, what fuel was it used. So you see all of those problems coming up with used car sales, what with new car sales, you don't have those problems. Also, in a new car sales, you don't have that uh, issue with servicing because in majority of cases, where you buy a car is where you service a car. So there you go, one problem has already been solved. But if you're working with used cars, 
you have to understand how to uh, project that to your potential viewers and customers where are they going to service their car how much is going to cost them how long is it going to take for them to service that car and problems of that nature so you have to understand and you have to be able to understand how to solve those problems for those particular people and the final skill I'm going to mention in this video is good presentations skills. You don't have to think of the presentation as just behance or dribble presentations. You can uh, think of a presentation as to what are you presenting to your client as a solution. For example, you got the job, well done. Now you start working on that design, but how are you going to present those solutions to your client? Are you going to do it through a medium of images? For example, Behance presentation, for say. So you're going to collect all of those images, put them together, stack them on top, and then present that to your client. Or are you going to do some kind of a digital solution, for example, digital prototyping in XD, for example, and you're going to generate a link and then send them that link. Those two are really quite different because your client's understanding of the project itself is going to be much different because in the prototyping that you sent them, they're going to be able to click through to leave feedback directly onto the prototype. They're going to be able to see versions. You're going to be able to generate a snippets of code for your developers and stuff like that. While with images, you're basically stuck with what you are shown. So therefore, if you're working with images, make sure to include as many details as possible. So to involve your client and make them understand a little bit better all of those details about the project. Also, if you're working in code, you know how to code and then you want to present it in code. It's the same story as with the prototyping in Adobe XD. For example, we just shared the link to clickable prototype. Here you have a live website per se. It's not live. It's not on servers, but it's on a local server. For example, you just want to show it to your client. That's going to be much more different than to just show the static image as a presentation. I'm not saying that static images are bad, far from it. They can be even better in many cases if presented well, but just work on your presentation's skills. You have to involve as many details which are crucial to that project as possible, and that way your client is going to be uh, able to understand that project much better, even though it's their project, it's their business, uh, they are the ones who hired you, but still you have to be able to present those solutions better to cut on the questions later. Because if you present your designs much better, if you explain how you arrived to certain conclusions much better, you're going to eliminate those questions further down the line. You're going to reduce your time and your workload in that project by explaining your decisions much better in that presentation stage. Finally, when you're presenting that work later in your portfolio, for example, make sure to use the entire system, the entire workflow that you used from communication to the client, to research, to wireframes, to website design, for example, to 3D prototyping, to clickable prototypes, to generating videos, as many things as you can, because those things and those details in your presentations is what is going to bring you more work in the future in that particular niche. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you got some value out of it. If you did, make sure to press that like button. I upload new videos every single week right here on the channel. So if you want, make sure to press that subscribe button not to miss out future videos on Adobe XD, design, passive income techniques and much more. Thank you for watching this one and until next time, take care.